We all know how water is essential and vital in our daily lives, and not just in the necessity of drinking it, but also in the applications that we use water for. It could be agricultural, industrial, production, and also electricity generation. But the problem lies here, is that 97% of Earth's water is salt water, and the remaining 3% is safe for drinking. But only 1% can be accessed easily, which makes it very difficult for many communities. In fact, more than 800 million people around the world don't have access to clean water, which tells us that we are already in a global crisis. There are many regions around the world that lack natural freshwater resources, and as the population increases, the demand for energy and water will increase. And in order to meet this demand, engineers have been looking for many solutions and methods to produce natural fresh water. Well, here the desalination process takes place, where it is the process of converting the salty sea water into fresh and drinkable water. Engineers have been looking for many technologies for this process, such as the reverse osmosis and the multi-effect desalination. These technologies consume tremendous amount of energy in order to produce large amounts of fresh water for a size of an entire country or an entire city. And that's why solar cells are suitable for the domestic uses where it utilizes solar energy, which is a sustainable source of energy in order to desalinate the seawater. The main goal with our study is that we are looking for a set of possible enhancements that could be implemented on a conventional solar cell in order to increase its productivity. So the main enhancement that we used in our study was to include the effect of ultrasonic waves in desalination. And what does that do is it, it actually produces mist or fog from the saline water. And the reason behind that is that this mist requires only a small amount of energy to evaporate as compared to saline water. To select the best material for increasing the productivity of the solar cell, CES software is used to pick the most suitable material that fits the system. The parameters that are measured and analyzed in this software are thermal conductivity and price. The software compares and investigates several ferrous and non-ferrous alloys according to the two parameters. It was decided that aluminum and copper alloys are the best material for this study. However, the price of copper sheets is inflated, and thus it was decided that aluminum alloys are the main material for the solar cell. As for the cover of the solar cell, there are two main types, glass and polycarbonate. Mutually, these types have many advantages and disadvantages, but by using the CES software, the decision of choosing between them is easier. From the software analysis, we can conclude that glass ceramic is an excellent material prone to sunlight and is stiffer than most materials that are transparent. In contrast, polycarbonate seem to degrade when exposed to sunlight and is not as stiff as other ceramics. Thus, Glass is the material selected for the cover of the solar still. So after we selected the materials, we managed to design our system and components on SOLIDWORKS. We also assembled them and we made sure that the design is around a one meter squared area. And using aluminum, we made sure that it is lightweight, which uh, creates uh, an easy task for uh, transportation. In our design process, we introduced a new water accumulator inside the solar cell. We call it the double slope through. And what does that do is actually it increases the rate of uh, water droplets as they are condensed from the glass. We also included a mist separator. And this is to ensure that the uh, fog or the mist that is produced by the ultrasonic does not get mixed with the fresh water output. The water tank distributes saline water to the solar cell and the ultrasonic box. Once the saline water enters the ultrasonic box, the ultrasonic transducers will convert it to the mist and then will be moved to the solar cell. The mist and the water inside the solar cell will evaporate and once they make contact with the glass, they will condense. The condensed water will move alongside the glass to the truth. The fresh water will then move to the fresh water container. Thermocouples are used to measure the ambient temperature, basin temperature and glass temperature. Also, the power meter will measure the energy consumption of the transducers. After we collected the fresh water output, we performed water quality tests in the environmental engineering labs in our university. 
including the pH value, the total dissolved salts, and the salinity, in order to make sure that our results are meeting the international water quality standards. The first test performed is the conventional uh, solar still test, where the hourly productivity profile is shown in front of us. In addition to the system temperatures, and that includes the temperature of the basin and glass, it is also important to measure and record the ambient temperature, since weather plays a role in affecting the results. The productivity versus time graph was plotted, and around 11 a.m., the productivity started to gradually increase, which was expected since the solar radiation flux is at maximum at noon time. The conventional solar still managed to produce 2.2 liters of water at an average of 244.44 milliliters per hour. The water quality test was performed, obtaining the values of the following parameters, such as the pH level, the total dissolved salts, and the salinity. Our main focus, however, is the process of desalinating the water, and that was done successfully as shown in the results of having a salinity level of 150 and 160 ppm, where the initial sample had a salinity level of 35,000 ppm. The second test is the ultrasonic solar cell test, where six atomizers were used in a separate chamber, and the mist was introduced to the solar cell. We have also plotted the productivity graph, obtaining a total of 2.1 liters, at an average of 233.33 milliliters per hour. In addition, we were able to calculate the temperatures of the basin, glass, and the ambient. The water quality tests were also made to the ultrason uh, ultrasonic test samples, obtaining a value of 40 ppm. The main causes behind the lower productivity of the ultrasonic solar still is the mist accumulation in the solar still, in addition to the weather conditions that were not ideal during the following test. However, upon introducing the atomized droplets and under better conditions, a higher output is expected. We were able to perform an optimized test after the submission deadline, as shown in this graph where for most of the timeline, the optimized test performed best by operating the automizers from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. A total of 2.115 liters was produced, which is not as good as the conventional solar cell. However, that is due to the effect of the weather on the results of the test in the last two hours. So as seen from the collected results, we can say that the use of ultrasonic technology in water desalination especially in solar cells, have a great potential in increasing the productivity. And this is why we performed many uh, tests, especially the optimized tests, as using this procedure can actually increase the output and at the same time reduce the cost. And we believe that using ultrasonic technology has a good future for domestic water desalination purposes.